things got out of hand during my friend's bachelorette party. My husband learned of the town rumor a few days later. From time to time, we encounter choices that appear enjoyable at the time, but which may ultimately cause our lives to fall apart in the future. I should know better than to put my marriage on the line for the purpose of a bachelorette party, but alas, I have done just that. To be honest, I don't know what to do next. I am at a loss as to how to appease my enraged hubby. Hillary is my name. My husband Philip and I have been wed for three years. He is 27 years old, and I am 28 years old. Although we have recently begun attempting to conceive, we are still childless and reside in the United States. On Tinder, I saw Philip's profile, and we immediately hit it off in our conversations. We spent weeks chatting, laughing, and connecting over our common interests. Meeting face to face was our last decision. I was anxious because it had been a long since I'd gone on a date, but I do recall making it to the restaurant. As soon as I saw Philip seated at a corner table, his warm grin immediately put me at peace. To break the ice, we smiled and made fun of the menu's unusual choices. The relaxed atmosphere allowed us to chat freely about anything from our youth to our favorite films to the online dating industry as a whole. The evening went on, and I got to know Philip better, his easygoing charisma, his real character, and our shared sense of humor. As we delved into the appetizers, our silent bond deepened with every glance we exchanged. There was a subtle change in the atmosphere as we were about to part ways that assured me I would see this man again. My second date with Philip was an experience at an art gallery. We opted to forego our typical dinner and movie date in favor of something more out of the ordinary. Even though I'm not very well versed in art, I thought it would be a great approach to break the ice with you to go on an adventure via colorful paintings and strange sculptures. We had meaningful talks that went beyond the usual small chat as we walked through the exhibitions with the artwork serving as a backdrop. The paintings seemed to provide a rationale for us to reveal more of ourselves to one another, allowing us to fully understand one another. Philip's observations on art and life piqued my interest. Aside from the shapes and colors on the walls, what really mattered was the opportunity to talk about our hopes, dreams, and the nuances that define us. In the calm atmosphere of the art gallery, we spoke about everything from our wildest childhood fantasies to the strange and amazing things that make us happy. How a random assortment of artwork could bring us closer together than we had been on our first date was mind-boggling. After taking it all in, we decided to visit a local food truck on the spur of the moment to keep the party going. Just street pleasures, no fancy dinners. It was intriguing to see how the vibe changed from the gallery's sophisticated elegance to the food truck's casual charm. As freely as the laughter ran within the solemn corridors of the gallery, we sat on a bench and shared bites of our odd meal choices. That night, what really stood out to me was how smoothly we moved from one setting to another. It wasn't about showing off our impeccable taste in art or cuisine. Rather, it was about bonding over a shared experience and taking delight in the novelty of it all. Not only did I discover that Philip and I shared similar interests, but I also discovered that we both find beauty in unexpected places. Moving in together was the next logical step after dating for a while. Here in our new house, Philip and I dove headfirst into the routine tasks of cohabitating. The kitchen was a melting pot of our different cooking methods and preferences and coordinating bathroom breaks in the mornings was a humorous issue. Dealing with shared obligations was an effort we made together, through humor and occasional fights. Along with deciding on new furniture and design, we took on jobs around the house. We argued more than we should have, so it wasn't all roses. Nothing was ever taken personally. Rather, every argument served as a springboard for more mutual understanding and development. Our intimate, private times together, sleepy Sunday mornings, eating breakfast in bed and peaceful evenings spent on the couch, brought us closer and we found comfort in the simple pleasure of being with one another. I will never forget the day Philip proposed. 
It was unexpected yet unforgettable. We were on a peaceful beach that we both adored, where we had many wonderful memories to cherish. As we strolled along the beach to the soothing sound of the waves, I could feel a particular vibe starting the day. I couldn't help but notice Philip's mixed emotions as the sun started to drop, a mix of nervousness and excitement. It was quite a romantic setting, wasn't it, with the candles and blankets? Philip opened up about how he felt and recounted all the wonderful times we had shared, using words that were both vulnerable and honest to create a picture of us embracing life's challenges together. Philip then got down on one knee, removed a little box, and opened it to show a dazzling ring, all while his eyes sparkled. As he popped the question, time stood still and a flood of feelings washed over me. Joy, anticipation, and the absolute knowledge that this was the beginning of something wonderful and lovely. Like us, the proposal was understated yet meaningful. Choosing me for the long term was more important than a nice setting. I responded yes, my eyes welling up with tears of joy. We sealed the pact for a future together with an embrace, Philip and I. What followed was a time of stargazing as we planned our next steps and reflected on our experience thus far. Meeting Philip's parents for the first time was an emotional roller coaster. I was both excited and nervous, and I couldn't help but worry what would happen next. We chose to spend some time in Philip's childhood house, which is filled with warm memories and the aroma of home cooking. Despite Philip assuring me that his parents were easygoing, I was still a little anxious as we walked up to the front door. My stomach still felt like it was about to explode at any second. I felt immediately at comfortable as his parents embraced me in comforting embraces the moment the door swung open. The air was heavy with the aroma of absolutely mouth-watering home, cooked meals, and the walls were covered with photographs of loved ones. Philip's parents were fantastic hosts. They set the tone for a laid-back gathering that was ideal for mingling. Gathered around the dining table, our plates piled high with homemade treats. We shared tales of our origins, our favorite things, and the events that had an impact on who we are today. It was fascinating to hear Philip's parents talk about their youth because it provided a new dimension of knowledge. Their affection, their inside jokes, and the dynamics of their family were all clear to me. Philip clearly placed a high value on family, and being welcomed into that realm felt rather extraordinary. As the evening went on, I realized that Philip's parents and I shared many beliefs and a deep admiration for the remarkable individual about whom we all cared. We started talking about real things, love, life, and the future, and my worries about making a good impression quickly faded. I was really touched by the warmth and hospitality shown by Philip's parents as we prepared to depart. Meeting them was only the beginning. It was like gaining insight into Philip's heritage and strengthening ties to the people and places that made him who he is today. The process of preparing for our wedding was full of joy, hope, and yes, some anxiety. It was a test of our love and patience, from planning the wedding to handling unforeseen problems. Our ideal wedding day filled us with joy in the beginning. Topics, locations, and invitees were the banter of late night chats. Those first few steps seemed easy, because of the encouragement we received from loved ones. However, anxiety levels rose in tandem with the start of the planning process. Our ideas disagreed, and family expectations added another layer, making venue selection a challenge. There were monetary considerations as well. The actual expense of the wedding ran counter to our planned party. Every day, people would get down to business discussing objectives, the expected number of guests, and how to achieve the perfect mix between simplicity and grandeur. While planning the guest list may have seemed like a good time at first, it quickly became a burden as we tried to strike a balance between having a large party and keeping it small. Having to make difficult choices that hit close to home was a part of it. The strain to live up to everyone's expectations, disagreements within the family, 
and difficulties with vendors were all unanticipated. We learned to rely on each other and face challenges as a team because of how they pushed our relationship to its limits. Dress fittings, flower selection, and meal sampling were the next level of thorough planning. Careful time management and unwavering commitment were required to juggle job, family responsibilities, and the mountain of wedding preparations. Amidst the mayhem, though, were some genuinely enchanted moments. Anchors that kept us going were choosing our vows, seeing our first dance, and envisioning a life full of memories. Additionally, our loved ones and friends were at our side the whole time. Our love story came to life on our wedding day, which was a tornado of feelings, laughter, and meaningful moments. Our journey unfolded in chapters, beginning with the morning flurry of getting ready with my bridesmaids and continuing through the evening celebration. Anxieties and enthusiasm were in the air as the day began. There was a positive energy, full of stories and laughter, as we got ready. As plans came together, the air was filled with the pleasant aroma of flowers. As a visual depiction of our trip, the venue was adorned with our favorite colors and personal touches. We seemed to be making a symbolic decision as we walked down the aisle toward a life together. A warm and welcoming ambiance of love and familiarity quickly filled the air as our loved ones started to congregate. Emotions ran high and low during the event. As we exchanged rings and said our vows, it seemed as though time had stopped. Sincerity permeated the thoughtfully selected phrases, establishing a unique setting in which our vows took shape. Our loved ones' unconditional support and affection encircled us like a warm blanket. The reception hall was alive with the sounds of music, laughter, and toasts. The emotional speeches in our first dance as husband and wife made the day more meaningful. The lovingly prepared meals were a joy for the senses as well as the stomachs. In the thick of the festivities, we found a moment of reflection to soak in the moment. The path that led us here, the challenges we overcame, and the remarkable individuals who were a part of it all. With the cheering smiles of our companions surrounding us, the dance floor transformed into our very own stage. A feeling of completion and the start of something new became more apparent as the night went on. The fabric of our wedding day was knit with shared laughter, tears of joy, and loving embraces. It was a magnificent memorial to the times that defined our path, a joyous celebration of love. There will be countless more memories made along the way. As a respite from the wedding chaos, our honeymoon was surreal. To celebrate our new union and relax into our role as a married couple, we decided to go to a tropical island with beautiful beaches and plenty of greenery. A flurry of activity accompanied our arrival. Boarding the plane signified our departure for the hidden paradise we had selected. It was like winning the lottery when you arrived at the resort. The combination of the ocean sounds and the aroma of flowers created an opulent atmosphere. The breathtaking view of the azure waves from our hotel provided the ideal setting for our romantic retreat. While on the island, we did a combination of exploring and lounging about. In the mornings, we would spend time on the beach, drinking drinks and enjoying the carefree atmosphere. We spent our afternoons diving, exploring new places and experiencing the local culture. We savored romantic candlelit dinners beneath the stars, savored the island's tastes, laughed till we cried, stole glances and shared moonlit moments that will stay with us always. An unforgettable event was a sunset cruise. The sky became a kaleidoscope of hues as the sun dipped below the horizon and we experienced a personal moment of magic as we sailed hand in hand along the coast. While on our honeymoon, we had several opportunities to connect with one another through meaningful conversation, including long beach walks that developed into in-depth discussions about our hopes, fears, and future goals. We were able to really appreciate one another's companionship without the usual interruptions of the work week. 
The kind hospitality of the villagers enhanced the genuineness of our journey as the days progressed. During tours and visits to the market, they offered anecdotes that gave us a taste of the place and its inhabitants. Our honeymoon came to an end when we left the island, but the memories stayed with us like glue. Reality hit after our ideal honeymoon and we were back home, settling into married life. I opted to stay at home and take care of the kids since Philip was doing well financially. Exactly three years into their marriage, my dear friend Angela revealed the shocking truth. With her joyously divulging the specifics of her wedding preparations, she enthusiastically accepted her boyfriend's proposal. I was invited to be a maid of honor at Angela's wedding because she had been such a rock during my own ceremony. As I reflected on all the ways Angela had supported me, I eagerly seized the chance to be there for her again. It was a real roller coaster of emotions being the maid of honor. We carried the weight of shared memories and the closeness we had formed over the years with us as we oversaw wedding preparations, attended dress fittings, and planned the bachelorette party. But the bachelorette celebration was the day that went wrong. It was no surprise that Angela proposed going out clubbing for her bachelorette celebration, given that she was the most vivacious and unpredictable member of our group and always brought the most joy and energy to our outings. My club days had taken a back seat since getting married to Philip, so I was completely on board with Angela's bachelorette party. Even though he's not the life of the party, my husband is dependable and steady, and I adore him nevertheless. Therefore, I was very looking forward to returning to the club. I promised myself I would take it slow, not drink too much, and soak up all the good energy. I kept the club element a secret from Philip, since I anticipated that he would likely reject the entire proposal if I told him. I just informed him that my girlfriends and I were planning a traditional girls' night for Angela's bachelorette party because he wholeheartedly supported the idea. The fact that he didn't delve too deeply was ideal for my modest plot. My well-laid plans to limit my alcohol consumption promptly went out the window the moment we arrived at the club. While enjoying myself with my pals, I did my best to keep it under wraps. It was great fun to get back into the club scene after a long absence, even though I had to adjust to some new things. You know the drill. My pals began pressuring me to down additional beverages after only a short while. They insisted it was a joyous event, and I, for one, wanted to partake in the festivities soberly so as not to embarrass myself. I caved and began drinking more, even if that was not my original intention. As you can expect, I was feeling all the positive feelings before I even knew it because one drink led to another. I might have gone a little bit overboard, but I couldn't help but keep sipping. Before I knew it, I was getting myself into some really ridiculous situations. My pals and I were already well into the inebriated scene and we were constantly egging each other on. It wasn't as innocuous as I'd assumed. After I got into a provocative dance with this guy, Things took a turn for the worse. As I went all out, kissing, touching, and dancing with an unknown guy, my buddies encouraged me. Until I became bored, I continued on for a bit, dancing and enjoying myself with other guys throughout the night. My head was hammering the following day as I awoke from the worst headache ever. The memories of the previous night resurfaced, and I was horrified, even though I was still hungover. I thought about informing Philip but then I was hesitant. Even though I hadn't exceeded any significant boundaries, I had already lied about the entire girls' night scenario. I decided it wasn't worth it to tell the truth since I never went all out with the guy. I guess I was wrong. Other people felt the same way. I made a bargain with the females that whatever happens at the club doesn't go out of hand. That was it. We solemnly agreed not to inform anyone else. Next thing you know, Angela's wedding was picture perfect. Everything about the event was breathtaking, and it was so much fun. It was a lovely party, with delicious food and a wonderful atmosphere. A few weeks following Angela's wedding, life continued as normal. The girls and I didn't get to see each other very frequently because of our hectic schedules, but we were looking forward to our planned get 
together next week. Philip dropped in on me at home, looking a bit agitated and emotionally distant, not giving it much thought. I reasoned that maybe he had been irritated by someone at the supermarket. It began to annoy me more as the days went by and Philip continued to act aloof. I couldn't help but wonder what I could have done to set off his icy attitude, which lasted for almost three days and was characterized by brief responses and an avoidance of eye contact. At last, I made up my mind to face it head, on and figure out what was wrong. After I worked up the nerve to ask Philip whether I had done anything to irritate him, he denied it with a straight face. I knew he was being dishonest because of his icy demeanor. He only laughed when I pressed him again. In my frustration, I told him to just stop being a braggart and come clean. His bombshell came at that moment, when everyone in town said I was easy. I didn't know how to grin. Gossip travels like wildfire in our small town because of how close everyone knows each other. It was unsettling to hear Philip say that individuals in town were contacting me. Aside from the event at the club, I was at a loss as to what else could have sparked such rumors. So I scoured my brain for ideas. The most perplexing aspect was tracking down how the details from the distant club made it to our area. The ease with which rumors can travel through smaller towns is undeniably a disadvantage. Philip might have read my guilt from the look of amazement on my face. There was no need to inquire as to the veracity of the town's stories. I inquired as to the precise words people were using and did my best to reassure him that I had done nothing wrong. Philip was more irritated than ever before. He was furious as well. He informed me that the locals were referring to me in that way since a video of me with the females at the club had leaked and no one could identify the girl responsible. I was about to cry because I realized what a huge error in judgment I had made. Philip may never forgive me, I thought to myself. I had been dishonest and lied about what the girls and I were doing that night. I fought tooth and nail to clear my name, saying that I hadn't slept with the person or gone to extreme lengths. But Philip still wouldn't listen. Dancing with the person, he said, was enough to constitute adultery. I pleaded with him, telling him that I had been drinking and that I would never have done anything so irresponsible if I had been sober. Philip ceased acting as though everything was all right. He had been treating me coldly for the past three days, and now I know it was all a tactic to get me to question anything so he could vent his fury. Without holding back, he told me I had to get out of the house and that we were divorcing. His harsh statements confirmed what the townies had suspected about me, that I was carefree, tears streaming down my face. I apologized over and over again, feeling helpless and unable to find the words to defend myself. Philip obviously didn't want to hear me out. Accordingly, I packed up my belongings and stormed out, crying the whole way. As a last resort, I returned to my parents' house in search of refuge and short-term housing. Upon learning the news, my parents' disappointment was obvious, and Philip's parents felt the same way. My parents went out of their way to contact Philip, so my guilt must have been heavy on their minds as well. They continued to try to communicate with him despite his intransigent rage. After Philip calmed down a bit, he consented to listen after originally being resistant. Philip said that forgiving my parents was impossible, no matter how much they tried. He told my parents he was getting a divorce because the humiliation he felt when he saw footage of his wife with another guy would stay with him forever. Philip refused to acknowledge that they could ever be mended or reconcile, even when my parents proposed couples therapy. Philip would not budge, even though I was virtually on my knees pleading and sobbing uncontrollably. He insisted on his choice and told me our relationship was finished. It's somehow comforting to know that I'm not the only one dealing with consequences, even though it's still disconcerting. Even newlywed Angela is coping with the fallout of her video's publication. Various relationships are being impacted by this, with some couples considering couples therapy, some on the brink of a separation, and still others, obviously, on the path to divorce. It's like a domino effect. Since I was a stay, at home, 
Mom and Philip was the only breadwinner in our household. He wasted no time draining our joint bank account. Now I'm left with nothing but the promise of the divorce papers he said he will send. The parents of Philip have been difficult to deal with. They have reached out, and you can feel their disappointment. Criticism and rumors have been flying about this town at me from every way. I am really contemplating escaping this town for a new beginning once the divorce is finalized. By telling my tale, I am able to find solace in the midst of the mayhem. I pray that anyone considering infidelity finds this and uses it as a turning point to think again.